Howdy. Howdy. My name is Stephanie Davis, and I am part of the Texas A&M Executive Search Team. On behalf of the rest of my team and the entire Human Resource and Organizational Effectiveness Department, we are excited to welcome you to today's open forum and Q&A session. We ask that you please take a minute to silence your cell phones. Also, there is no photography or video recording allowed during this session. We have our friends from CAMU who will be producing a recorded version of this entire forum, including the Q&A session, which will be available to view on the TAMU Executive Search's website in the days to come. And I'd also like to welcome everybody who's joining us uh, via the webinar. I would like to now introduce you to a member of the Provost Search Advisory Committee, Del Rice, who will introduce our esteemed guests. Thank you. Dr. Eli Jones is a highly accomplished professor of marketing with extensive business experience in sales and sales management. Currently serving as the Lowry and Peggy Mays eminent scholar at Texas A&M University, he previously held leadership roles as Dean of Mays Business School, Dean of the Sam Walton College of Business at the University of Arkansas, and Dean of the E.J. Orso College of Business at Louisiana State University. Dr. Jones has made significant contributions to the academic community, publishing over 50 peer-reviewed research articles in top academic journals, and co-authoring several professional books on sales and sales leadership. His research has been cited over 9,000 times by peers, is also highly regarded as an educator, having received numerous awards for teaching excellence. He's taught a variety of courses at the undergraduate and master's level, including strategic selling, professional selling, key account selling, sales leadership, and marketing strategy. He also enjoys teaching and customized executive education courses before becoming a professor Jones worked in sales and sales management for three Fortune 500 global companies. Beyond academia, Dr. Jones is an active member of the business community, serving on several boards, including the American Marketing Association, First Financial Bank, Insperity, and the Invesco Funds Complex. In 2021, he was honored with recognition by Savoy Magazine is a most influential corporate board member, and he is a recipient of the Aggie Impact Award for, <clears throat> for making a global impact in his community and profession. He's received prestigious awards for his contributions to the sales and sales management discipline, marketing education, and his community and profession. These awards include the AMA Erwin McGraw-Hill Distinguished Marketing Educator Award in the Academy of Marketing Science Distinguished Educator Award. Two of his most cherished awards are from his alma mater, Texas A&M University. In 2009, Jones was recognized as an outstanding doctoral alumnus and in 2022, he received Mays Business School's Outstanding Alumnus Award. These awards are symbolic of his commitment to bridging academia and business. Dr. Jones holds a PhD in marketing, an MBA, and a BS, all from Texas A&M University. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jones. Howdy. Howdy. I'm so glad you're here. Kelly, thank you for coming. That's amazing. Wow. I'll start calling you out. You know how I am. You know how I am. And I'm really grateful that my grandson is here. He's a sophomore here at A&M, and he came. So thank you so much. He gave me a big hug. For those of you who are watching, I tell you, I'm so grateful that you're here. And I want to thank these two ladies, too, in particular, because they have been working very hard behind the scenes. So Patty and Stephanie, thank you for putting this together. They were working with me throughout the weekend, by the way. 
So I, I really, really appreciate that. I've got some prepared remarks to start off. Uh, I'm not one who's tied to the podium, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to read these remarks to you, all right, because I want to be crystal clear in terms of my intentions and how I see this opportunity. And then I'm going to come back and present from this PowerPoint presentation. At any time, you can stop me, all right, and we'll, we'll be sure to answer your questions. I knew there, no, no, there's Q&A at the end here. So let me start by uh, welcoming you, and I just want to thank the, the nominators, I think, for nominating me <laughs> for this position. I really do, and I want to thank the search committee, too, for really leading the efforts here and the opportunity to address you. My primary objective over the next two days of these interviews is to operationalize the concepts that we lovingly and frequently refer to as our Aggie core values. We all know those, right? Respect, excellence, leadership, loyalty, integrity, and selfless service. Thank you. I saw the motion of the lips. That's good. In fact, it might be a fun exercise for those with whom I interact to jot down the times that you see me demonstrating the Aggie core values and or mentioning the Aggie core values. I'll start by acknowledging the four other candidates for the role of provost here. And uh, I want to say that Dr. Sams and Polly Carpu, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, will follow me this week and next, and I'm very interested in hearing their perspectives. Now, last week, I stopped to listen to Drs. Klein and Anderson. I respect these colleagues and appreciate their sincere interest in being a provost here. The role here at Texas A&M has dramatically changed over the last couple of years. And so I'm looking forward to learning more about this new organization and how it works with the others here. And I will tell you, I'd love to contrast what we have here to other R1 universities, provost opportunities there, because I'll tell you, and this is not meant to be boastful, but I get calls to be a provost and a president from other universities. I s decided to stay here. This is home. This is my alma mater. Now, Dr. Klein mentioned his important service on the Faculty Senate, and he mentioned the state of flux our university is in at this time, and how it has affected employee morale. Dr. Anderson emphasized radical collaboration, which is also important. Another critical aspect of being a provost is leading leaders, such as the deans and those in the provost office. This is the area on which I will focus. My talk today will focus on vision and leadership. I've titled my presentation, The Power of Possibility. My mom and dad, with no formal education, started and managed three small businesses. They believed in the power of possibility. In fact, every entrepreneur I've met has talked about opportunities and possibilities over and above the inherent challenges of starting and maintaining a business. My mom and dad, may they rest in peace, taught me that with God, all things are possible. As a first-generation college grad, I attended this university and graduated three times, first gen. And in the audience, you can see my grandson, who's here, getting his degree from here. To me, that's transformational. And the very fact that I am a first gen, and I'm interviewed to be the chief academic officer at this university, if that is not mind-boggling, I don't know what is, but I do think it demonstrates the power of possibility. For those students who are watching, in particular those students, and some of whom I'm teaching this semester, I want you to see this as an opportunity. You too could be up here one day interviewing to lead this university, the power a possibility. See, at Texas A&M, I want everyone to understand that here, all things are possible. Students, listen up. 
all things are possible. At Texas A&M, we must provide access to promising students no matter their cultural and ethnic backgrounds and provide them a transformational education. We should focus on transformational leadership, which is change embracing. Wikipedia defines transformational leadership as creating a vision to guide the change through influence, inspiration, and executing the change in tandem with committed members of a group. And that's what I want to talk about, the power of possibility and transformational leadership and whole philosophy. So I'm going to walk you through real quickly, and you got it? Is it working? You got to rely on our tech guys here. There we go. All right. So you heard my bio, and this is really not about me. It's about the possibility. That's what we're talking about. But you know, the way to kind of frame my background is I have kept one foot in business and one foot in academia. Because I set out as an assistant professor some years ago, I set out a vision for myself. It was my own mission, my own mission, my own vision. And I said, I want to be a bridge for academia and practice. That's what I said. I put it out on LinkedIn. I'm in the business of transforming lives, and I want to be a bridge. Now, if you look at it closely, someone, one of my colleagues ended up saying, it's, it's all about the threes. That's what she said. Jo Dr. Janet Parrish, one of my dear colleagues, that she was introducing me. I'm a three-time Aggie. I'm a three-time dean. I work for three global companies. And it happens to be that my name is Eli Jones III, so I'm the third. <laughs> I didn't plan it that way. It just worked out. It just worked out. Worked out. And so when I look at the, these, these things that, that you were so kind to read about, uh, it is true. It was a real honor that my department actually nominated me and recognized me as an outstanding doctoral student and alum. Real honor. And even better than that, which is hard to be better than that. But my whole college recognized me as an outstanding alumnus last year. And that is very, very special. May's Business School is so, so special to me. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Now, you can see this picture here. Uh, and in fact, at, uh, at this morning's breakfast, I was asked about the provost position. And uh, I want to let you know that that was my reaction the first time I was asked to consider being a provost. That was, yeah, that was exactly my reaction, pretty much. And I look, it's, I'm not talking about just here, all right? It doesn't take long. If you're a dean for about two to three years, all of a sudden you're going to get calls. People want you to consider being a provost, a, a president, a chancellor, and all that. But it, you know, when I got this one, even though I said no to the others, this is my alma mater. This is about loyalty and selfless service. That's what this is about. The provost role is a service role. That's what this is about, right? And so I want to walk through why I think this is a good opportunity, but I want to be clear that if I wanted to be a provost, I could have done that 12 years ago. This one is different. This one is different. It's here at Texas A&M. I love teaching. I love teaching. I really, really enjoy it. You know I do. My poor grandson, he hears me even after hours. I'm still teaching. I can't turn it off. I just love, love teaching. Uh, 